All right, so you're familiar with the original Star Wars trilogy, as well as Jar Jar Binks and those three prequels. What have I done? You may have even seen the Star Wars holiday special. You look at Lumpy. Mm. He's sure grown, huh? I think his voice is changing. <laughs> so where does Rogue One, a Star Wars story, fit into all of this? I'm gonna tell you. Let's pick up at episode, let's call it three and three quarters, with Star Wars Rebels. It takes place in the latter part of that 19 year gap between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. The show lays the foundation of the Rebel Alliance, focusing on a team similar to Rogue One's outmatched heroes. They put up a good fight against the Empire, but like a bunch of Padawans versus Emo Anakin, they don't stand a chance. See, the Empire had much bigger plans, like building a super weapon space station capable of wiping out entire planets. The Death Star had been under construction since the Clone Wars, but it was missing a very important feature, that whole planet-destroying laser part. And in retrospect, they could have spent a little more time designing those exhaust ports. Which brings us up to the events of Rogue One's prequel novel, Catalyst. The book focuses on Jyn Erso's father and super talented scientist Galen, as well as Orson Krennic, an up-and-coming Imperial lieutenant. Galen's specialty was generating power through the use of kyber crystals. These crystals are kind of like the Duracells for lightsabers. Now imagine what you could build if you had a whole bunch of these things. So good old Krennic, eager to put a cherry on top of the Death Star Sunday, brings Galen to Coruscant to work on a sustainable energy source. Wink, wink. What Galen doesn't know, he's actually helping Krennic develop the weapons tech for the space station. Being the great guy that he is, Krennic supplies Galen with piles of kyber crystals. But unbeknownst to Galen, these were all taken from the lightsabers of dead Jedi. Total dick move, right? When Galen finds out, he's not too happy. He and his family escape from Coruscant with the help of Saw Gerrera, who's the leader of a resistance group called the Partisans. So when we catch up with Saw in Rogue One, we can assume that Jin already considers him a close friend. The world is coming undone. Speaking of Jin, she's all grown up and quite a rebellious badass with a particular grudge against the Empire. She's also the perfect person to lead a mission to steal the Death Star's secret plans. From Episode 4, we already know that her team is successful in getting these plans to the Alliance, but we don't know who will make it out alive. Do you have any theories on how the film will end? Let us know in the comments, and for all your film, TV, and comic book needs, keep it here on GameSpot Universe.